that is modern methods of agriculture. We need to. Hello, good afternoon. There are four overwhelming underdogs on the ballot for this year's elections. They are the PPP, the GCPP, the UFP, and an independent candidate. Many would say these parties simply make up the numbers, but some also argue that altogether they can push the December elections into the much dreaded runoff. Well, yesterday, the state broadcaster gave the parties an opportunity to sell their policies to the electorate. So today, we sample their views on the key issues, but more essentially, gauge their likely impact ahead of the December elections. Can they together become joint kingmakers, or should the main political party simply dismiss them? We're live from the multi-TV studios and also live on radio at Joy 99.7 FM. Together, we are your election headquarters. We're taking a short break. We'll be right back. You're live on Joy 99.7 FM and live on the Joy News channel on Multi TV. This is your election headquarters. This afternoon, we are also live on Love FM in Kumasi, and this program is brought to you by Infobox Mobile Services. Text election to 1922 for more. My name is Araba Kumsen. Now, just like in the 2008 election, we will this year again have eight presidential candidates on the ballot. In 2008, the sheer number of candidates vying for the same amount of total votes contributed in a large part to the runoff poll we witnessed. When you have so many people going after a fixed number of total votes, it becomes difficult for anyone to win outrightly. Now, that was the reality in 2008, but will it be the same this year? Some may suggest that an answer to that question will depend on how well the smaller parties do in the elections. In 2008, for example, uh, again, an agent, uh, for example, the uh, CPP, PNC, and other smaller political parties, including one independent candidate, together got 0.74% of the total votes. If you consider that it took only 1.58% to push the elections into a runoff, then you begin to appreciate how significant the other smaller parties can be in deciding the elections. Well, yesterday we got an opportunity to hear from the other four candidates on the ballot paper. Let's sample some of the views on the key issues. Let's first hear from Dr. Papakwisi Indum of the PPP spelling out his party's policies on the fisheries sector. I come from a fishing town, Elmina. I want to remove the evil hands of government from fishing. You go to Elmina, go to Mori, go to Apam, go to Choco, and there are government officials putting their hands in premix and where you have to rely on connection, connection with your own money to get premix. We will remove it so the fishermen will develop, will get money, can go fishing without any hindrance from politicians. We'll remove the politicians from fishing. And that's PPP presidential candidate Dr. Papa Kwesi Indum. Well, presidential candidate for the Great Consolidated People's Party, Dr. Henry Latte, on his part, says his government will resource the farmers to ensure they produce enough for the country. Don't underrate our farmers. They are very good is that they are not well resourced. And if we resource them very well, you see what they will do. But the first thing is that we have to help them to to grow things that we eat here and then grow, grow things that is eaten in West Africa. We have nearly three to 400,000 people in West Africa. We can sell yam, we can sell gari, we can sell plantain, and we can make so much money. Maize and rice and as well can, can be grown. Now, presidential candidate of the United Front Party, Kwesi Adai, popularly called ODK, says he will embark on agrarian revolution to ensure the farmers are resourced to work hard. That is modern methods of agriculture. We need to construct more holes in our farms, extend electricity there, to and, and put uh, water pumps on it so that 
we can have re reliable irrigation system that is surface um, irrigation again we, we we need to process our farm produce to give our farmers ready market that is to link up agriculture with industry when we are able to do that then the farmers will be rest assured of ready market an independent candidate, Jacob Osei uh, Yeboah, on his part, says he will champion innovative ways of improving agriculture in the country. Now, if we go to the Western world, 3% feed the whole nation. But if you come to Ghana, just as the indicators that you gave, if that is right, 60%. But even with the 60%, we are not able to feed ourselves. It means that there's something fundamentally wrong. That is where that intervention that we're talking about is actually needed. You're still live on Election Headquarters, live on Joy 99.7 FM, also on Love FM in Kumasi, as well as the Joy News Channel on Multi TV. Now, let's now gauge the likely impact of these parties come December 7. And joining me in the studio is Belinda Bulle. She's the Women's Coordinator with the PPP. Thank you very much, Madam, for your time. Uh, let's first start by getting the perspective of a political science uh, lecturer, Dr. Bosman Asari. He's with the University of Ghana, and he joins me on the line. Thank you very much for your time, sir. Uh, thank you, and good afternoon to you and your listeners. Now, if you consider that in the 2008 elections, all the four other minor political parties, uh, not including the CPP and the PNC, only managed to get 0.74%, will it be safe to dismiss them as simply adding to the number? No, I don't think we can just dismiss them as adding to the number. Because ele election is about choices. So people should get the chance to vote for whoever they think is the right person for the job. And when you analyze critically, you realize that Ghana is a diverse society. We have different ethnic groups, different religious groups. And some of these minor political parties also think that there are certain things the major political parties are not addressing. And they think that they are in a better position to address that. So because of our diversity, I think they are all very relevant for our political system. Now, Doc, can any of these political parties by themselves, uh, individually, make any significant impact uh, to shape the outcome of the polls in December? In this election, it looks like uh, PPP will, uh, will do very well. But when we look at uh, what we are hearing from, from the campaigns, the places they are going to and the responses they are getting, I think that PPP, if we are not very careful, should be getting around 3 to about 5 percent. And if they are able to get that, what it means is that the elections will automatically head into the second round. And if PPP is going to get something like that, look at the other parties will bring about 0 0.4 or 0 0.5 percent of vote. So that means that we, we probably will head into the second round. All right, hold on for me, uh, Doc, because I have the women's coordinator of the PPP, Belinda uh, Bulle, with me in the studio. Uh, thanks again for your time. Mm -hmm. Tell me, uh, what is it looking like for your party? Oh, um, good afternoon. And then first of all, I'd like to thank GBC, okay, for giving us the opportunity to come and also explain our policies to the Ghanaians. But having said that, for me, I would say it looks pretty good, okay, because when the PPP was formed, we made a promise that we were going to make sure that um, the discussion or the political discourse was an issue was an issue based one. For this year, I can say that we led it, and now almost everybody is trying to do some form of issue based politics. We have been everywhere. For a party that was formed in February this year, I would say we have done very well because everywhere you go to, everywhere you go to, the bright red sun is shining on everybody, and there's hope. People are beginning to think that okay. Maybe, after all, there's going to be a third party that is going to give us a kind of hope that, we, that has been lost for a while. But there so are those who uh, argue that the party is driven by Dr. Indum, the presidential candidate's uh, personality. In two 2008, he was the presidential candidate of the CPP. Uh, he got warm reception from majority of people, especially the young people, and yet he failed to make an impact. In fact, he got less than 1%. Correction, he got 1.31%. I beg your pardon, less than 2%. <laughs> okay. 
Um, really, personalities are always important, okay? Because like we keep saying, it's going to be one person who's going to be president. So you can't, you, you can't divert from that, that the um, personality is important. But really, we are changing, okay? People, like I said, everywhere you go, everyone is saying, okay, this time around, let's give another party a chance. If they didn't do that in 2008, they have realized, they've experienced um, NDC3, they've experienced NPP1, um, 2, and so Tell they me, what, what has changed? What exactly has changed? No, but then you know yourself. Look at the response that the PPP is getting. A party that was formed this year. And everywhere you go to, I mean, the PPP cannot be ignored, okay? We say something and somebody actually picks on it and tries to, you know, broaden it. And so for me, I'm saying that Ghanaians are becoming more discerning, okay? They're beginning to have um, hope. And they're being bold to actually, you know, challenge the social school. And so it, for me, it's changing, really. I, I really believe that it's changing. And it's going to be good. And December 7th, you're going to be surprised at the results. All right, okay. Let's go back to the lines and speak to uh, Dr. Bosman Asari. Doc, do you think that the parties, uh, it's prudent for the parties to join forces at this point in time? Can they make any impact if they do so? No, I don't, I don't, think, I don't think they should, they should join forces because uh, some, they have certain philosophies that are so unique to them. And they want to present those philosophies to the voters just to test the voters and find out whether the voters are going to go with them. Because if, if we are talking about them merging, merging, joining other parties, then we may end up having what uh, people have called voting without choosing. All the electorates must have the choice. They must have all these options and make a, a determination or a decision that this is the party we like. Whether they are a major party or they are minor and independent, etc., voters must have all these options on the table. They can decide they want to come together, but I think now it's not the time for them to be doing that. They should go into the elections and let's see. If there should be a second round, then they can decide which party they believe identifies with their interests. But individually, Doc, do you think any of them can obtain the 5% needed to push uh, the polls to the second round? I think uh, your panelists just said that the voters are discerning, things are changing, people are looking at certain things. Because they've experienced NDC almost three times, NDC two times. So for all you know, people are thinking differently. People are thinking outside the box. When you look at the TTC flag bearer, the track record is very excellent in terms of accomplishment. He has been in government before. So people are saying that maybe we might give him a try. So we can't tell until we vote on December 7th. So I, I am very sure that maybe the minor parties may end up getting even up to 7%. And if it happens that way, you realize that the major parties are going to take them very serious. And, and Doc, when uh, it comes to a second round, it will be very significant. Very finally, Doc, which of the smaller parties do you think will make a splash uh, in the December polls? Now, if you are adding the PNC, the CPP, I think the PPP is going to make a uh, very huge show on election day, especially in the central region. Thank you very much. And that's uh, Dr. Bosman Asari. He's a political science lecturer. Thank you very much for your time. Let me give you the last word, Belinda. What do you make of your chances? The, you had the political science lecturer. He says that uh, he's confident the PPP may be able to make a splash in the first round. If there is a first round, what do you think? I believe that it's going to, there's going to be a runoff. And I'm also with a strong conviction that the PPP is going to be there not to support, but actually solicit for some, of the, some other party's support, okay? Because really, Arba, where we are going to, okay, people are really fed up. Now, they want to see practical solutions, not rhetorics. And if you listen to all the presidential candidates, they've actually been, you know, confined themselves in some rhetorics. Dr. Papa Kwesi has been very specific, and he's been giving us practical solutions. And unless we all decide to go that route, then, you know, it's a joke what we are doing. But the comments I've been hearing from people, ordinary people, is that Dr. Papa Kwesi has good ideas, but they feel that they would be wasting their votes if they decide to vote for him. Thank you very much. So, and this goes to all Ghanaians. If you think or you believe that he is the best person, then every single vote is important. You can't plant corn and expect the ground not to germinate. If you want good programs, if you want good developmental agenda, then why, why settle for second best? Okay, everybody's vote is important. They will not be wasting their votes. I am voting for Dr. Pakwe Sindhu. I know millions of other people will be voting for him. So everybody, every vote is important. I'm telling all Ghanaians to come on board to vote for the PPP. 
the PPP, if they want Ghana to move to a certain level that they can't even imagine, okay? If they don't do that, they should forget it. We are going to go back to what we don't want anyway. And so for me, Ghanaians, this is your chance. Either you take this opportunity or you sit down next day and you go like, hmm, any manka. Thank you very much. And on that note, we end the program. That was uh, Belinda Bulle. She is the women's uh, coordinator for the Progressive People's Party. That's it for election headquarters today. The program was brought to you by Star Ghana, as well as Infobox Mobile Services. Text election to 1922. This program was live from the studios of Multi TV. It also came to you live in Kumasi on Love FM. I'm Araba Kumsen. And stay tuned to join news on Multi TV because we will be bringing you uh, that live coverage of the interaction between uh, the works minister, E.T. Mensah, and agitated workers of the Ghana Urban Water Limited right after this. I'm Araba Kumsen. Thanks for your time.